Name ist Susanne Ese und ich bin die Gründerin und CEO der gemeinnützigen Organisation EPEC Social. Was wir uns zum Ziel gesetzt haben, ist die sozialen Fachkräfte zu stärken. Durch interdisziplinäre, internationale Auslandserfahrung, durch Weiterbildungen, durch inspirierende Kongresse, wo wir Informationen aus der ganzen Welt zugänglich machen für die deutschen sozialen Fachkräfte. How are you? So excited. Me too. I'm fine. I'm doing fine. I just got my coffee and my water with lime juice. Oh, I love <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the Epic Social Podcast. I'm so excited because this is an English speaking episode. And obviously, you can hear my German accent. I'm trying my best. And. <laughs> <laughs> Please be nice to me, because it's not always easy to speak in public in your second language. So and I'm a little, maybe too much excited, you know, I'm a, I'm a little all over the place because of my excitement right now. But <laughs> you sound great. <laughs> I'm so happy to welcome here. Megan, welcome. I would like to invite you to introduce yourself and tell us who you are. Where you're coming from and what you're doing. Okay, thank you. Um, so my name's Meg. I am from Boston and I am with a host family in Westfield, New Jersey. And my host child that I take care of is 18 and he has autism and Tourette's. Um, so I hang out with him and I help him develop his life skills. And we hang out. We have a good time together. Yes, that's so interesting. It's so, I want to, obviously, you, we're going to learn more about you, your daily life as a care professional from Apex. There are two types of care professional with Apex Social. So we have the German or European, um, most times from Germany, Luxembourg. Austria, and then we have the Americans. What's similar between the German care professionals and the Americans is that everyone has to have a degree in therapy, in teaching, in nursing, in professional care, in attendance and supporting of people with special needs. You have a degree too. What was your degree you accomplished before starting with Apex? Yeah, so I have a degree in teaching. Um, I graduated in May from the University of Massachusetts, Boston. Um, and I graduated to become a teacher. That's awesome. Yeah. So good. And you have work experience over six years. Mm -hmm. You were working in a special needs school. How was that? It was great. So when I was 16, I started working at um, a school as a paraprofessional. So I helped around in the classroom. And I only did it in the summer because I was going to school. And then when I went to college, I started doing full days during the school year. And I got so much experience with all different types of kids. Um, so kids that were kind of lower on the spectrum who just had maybe ADHD. And then I worked with kids who are higher on the spectrum who had medical issues like epilepsy. And I worked with kids who have behaviors. So I got a lot of experience, which is very helpful for what I'm doing now. Yes. Because now you are a care professional living with your family mm -hmm. in house, nurse, yeah, supporting and training, and also supporting the family, obviously, in daily life. But your focus is on your child. How old is he right now? Um, so right now he's 18. Um, so that's pretty much 
that's a big reason why I'm here because as a US care professional, um, I can work with kids who are over 18 mm -hmm. um, because I don't need a work visa. Exactly. And all the care professionals coming from Germany or Austria or Luxembourg, they can just partner with a family with kids under 18. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. There are some other differences like negotiations, um, mm -hmm. what you get and stuff. It kind of, we're going to go through this. Thanks for being here. I love the way you can show us your daily schedule, your daily life and give us a better picture about for everyone out there to understand what special and awesome work you're doing daily with just you and your profession. And I think, I feel like I should put out like a, a shout out to everyone being with the family right now and supporting the family and also to the families as well that are caring about the care professionals and supporting and giving them the safe space they need to be with the kids and to be like a little cheerleader, right? It's very, it's a very interesting position because usually as a teacher, you have multiple kids and working with Apex, you focus on one or maybe sometimes two kids. Mm -hmm. What made you start going with Apex instead of going to a school? I, like you said, had been out of school working for six years. So I got a lot of experience being in a classroom. And when I graduated, I was a little scared to have my own classroom and kind of jump into the real world a little bit. So, and I really wanted to travel as well. So when I graduated, I was working for a family in Boston who have an au pair through Apex. And she told me about the domestic program that they started during COVID. Um, so I ended up contacting Apex and I interviewed with them and I made my profile and I was like, wow, this sounds so awesome. And I'm so happy that I decided to do that instead of going into a classroom setting because now I can get more experience working one-on-one -on -one with kids. Yes, you're building up such a strong relationship to your kid, right? Mm -hmm. What is the one thing you love about it? I love that I can, I really get a sense for his life. So in a classroom setting, you see kids working hard on schoolwork and socializing with other students. Whereas now I kind of get to see the home life of a, a child and what home and how they're working on their skills at home. So in the classroom, they might be working on letters or numbers, whereas at home, they're more focused on maybe brushing their teeth or mm -hmm following their after school schedule. So I really like seeing that. Yes. It's so interesting, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. something you don't you especially it's so good for you as a teacher to gain a sense about how life could look at home. And also not just gaining a sense, but you're gonna be a big part of this home life. And at the same time you can still like connect to the teachers see what goals they are working right now on and bring the things they do in the schools home. I'm a big fan of ABA therapy, especially with behavioral um, things. And I think it's very depending for some people. It can be very structured and helpful at home. Is this something you're doing too? Yeah, so um, my host child works with ABA therapists privately. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's another part that I really love. I get to watch them work with him and they 
find things that help him get through his schedule. And I love watching them do it. And then I'm able to help him with it more when yeah. they're not working with him. Yeah. I want to get some more information about your family. So far, it sounds so good to me. Yeah. Let's get into the first stage. So let's say you have a degree. You need to know where you're coming from. You need to know, am I a speech ther therapist? Am I an OT? Am I a nurse? And then you need to find your family, right? Mm -hmm. The best matching is if you can learn and support at the same time the child in-house and the needs of the child fits with what you can give and your knowledge. Yeah. And now we come to the interview phase. So you told us, you set up a profile where you're telling the family about your profession, about your personality, because you're going to live with them. You want to find a family that's matching with you too. You can hang out, eat popcorn on the couch and watch movies. Go. Mm -hmm. How was this for you? How can you find out if the family is fitting to you? Yeah, that was definitely hard. I think the whole matching process, it took me a couple months. Um, I had interviewed with a lot of families and I was mostly interviewing with families from California because that's where I wanted to go. Um, I wanted to make a big jump and move all the way across to the West Coast. <laughs> to the sunny state. Yes, exactly. So I had interviewed with a lot of families there and they were all super nice. And then I got a message from my host family now and they were in New Jersey. And I was like, I'm just, I'm going to interview with them and see. Mm -hmm. And I ended up talking to the host mom and we instantly clicked. Like we just, we talked for about an hour on the phone And it felt so right. And I knew right then I was like, oh, I love them. So I ended up matching with them just, I think, two weeks later. We had a couple more interviews. And by the third one, we had arranged for me to come to New Jersey to meet them. Um, which luckily, it's pretty close to Boston. It was about four hours so I came and met them for a weekend and they hosted me at their house oh, and they were beautiful. so great. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. So luckily when I came, she was like, oh, we would love to have you in our family. And that's another thing why I feel so good here is because they don't make me feel like I'm just working they really make me feel like I'm part of their family and we go on vacation together and I've celebrated holidays with them and they've been nothing but nice. Mm -hmm. I hear that from other families too. And this is exactly why I personally love this program because it's not just a professional job and exchange for people from Europe. It's also for you, you're going to be in another family culture. You're going to see, experience something you don't get in this way anywhere else. Living with someone. It's so true. Know them and they get to know you. Yeah. And I already know that I'm going to be in contact with them for the rest of my life. Yeah. I've already become so close with them. Yes. I had... Personally, I had the same experience with my family, my second host family from Boston. And they just came to my wedding a month ago. Oh, I love that. Yes, I love them so much. You're going to be there as a support person and a professional teacher in-house. Um, let's clear quickly up what they give you in exchange. For Instead of a weekly stipend, like the German au pairs get, um, the U.S., you can negotiate an hourly pay. 
So I get an hourly pay from my family. And they did offer me a car as well. And then I get uh, my own bedroom. And I'm lucky I have my own bathroom. And I have my own space upstairs in their house, which is super nice. And do you have to pay for food? No, they um, make dinner and they told me I'm allowed to eat the food in their fridge, which is so nice. Yes, it is. But it really makes you feel like your family member, huh? Like it does. And living together. Yes, that's good. So thanks for sharing this because obviously we want to like get paid probably, especially if you have a degree and you know what a teacher or nurse or like people in your field um, getting paid. So this is in your hands too. Obviously, Apex Social makes sure that the family pay you minimum wage but you can negotiate and you should negotiate and you should this is why it's also so important to um, find a good match where your profession fits in with the special needs of the ch children because yeah. you can provide a good service you can ask for more money and you can negotiate and this is something I like a lot um, you said already The family can give you a car. You brought your own car, I think. Yes, I did. So when I was coming from Boston, it's only a four-hour drive. So I have a lot of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to bring all of them. So they, I asked my host family before I came if it would be okay if I brought my own car. Um, and... I did bring it here, which is nice. And they've been super helpful. Um, actually, my car broke. A part of it broke last month. And they paid for the repairs, which was so nice. Mm, okay, that's awesome. Also, because we talked about traveling before, you get paid. You have almost zero... Um, things to pay for yourself like there's just like a little little things you have to pay you don't have to pay for rent mm -hmm. and I don't know how the rent situation is for you in Jersey, but I'm currently in Miami and <laughs> I can live with my family <laughs> yeah it's expensive <laughs> dude I would love that I know <laughs> I don't know what I should do with my husband because obviously he has to pay rent too. <laughs> Now we're living together. But if I could be again a care professional and not paying rent, this was like I had so much money left. Honestly, I could use all my money for traveling, road tripping, going out, party, food, mm -hmm. concerts, all this fun stuff. I loved it. I felt like so rich. I know it's so Don't true. Anything, yeah. <laughs> so, let's talk about the self growth and the independence you were looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was definitely um, the hardest part about moving um, and kind of uprooting was I was leaving all my friends behind and. When I was living in Boston, I was living with my friends and I worked with my friends and I saw my friends pretty much every day. And then when I came to New Jersey, it was so different because I didn't know anybody here. So it was really hard when I first came here because it's also hard to meet people mm. um, because I'm 22. So there's not a lot of ways to meet other people as a 22 year old, unless you're like in school or working somewhere with other people. So I think that was one of the biggest struggles, but it pushed me out of my comfort zone a lot. And it really helped me be able to talk to people in public. If I was out at like a bar or 
getting lunch or taking a walk. It pushed me to try to talk to people and meet people more. A terrible feeling to leave your friends and to leave the people behind. Especially, I don't know if you suffer with homesickness, but I definitely do. And it's not cool. At the same time, it's so true. You're getting outside of, of your nutshell because you have to. Every human being is a social. Like we are all social. Some people are more extrovert. Some people are more introvert, obviously. But you need to find friends. And it's so important for your own well-being to have social contacts outside the families. And it's also something you don't experience usually if you would not move to another city because in your city you live with your friends you you were working with them hi hi megan megan's friends it's so nice if you're listening here it's so <laughs> and i like you because you obviously have a great friend and finding new friends can be so challenging yeah That's How are you doing that? You talking to other people? Did you talk to people in a bar? Like, are you like, hi? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> the first, um, I think, <laughs> sorry, what? I did that. When I moved to Los Angeles, I was this person. I was definitely like saying like, oh, cool. I love your dog, you know? <laughs> that's pie. So where are you living? <laughs> yeah, I that's what I had to do too. I the first month I did a lot of stuff by myself. I went to, I used to go to the movies by myself and I would go into New York city by myself. And I always found myself trying to talk to people. And just like you said, Oh, your dog is so cute. Or like, I really like your shirt. Um, and then luckily my, um, my, The New Jersey care professionals and au pairs, they are super good about meetups every month. So my first monthly meetup, I got to meet all the other au pairs in the area. And they have, they're all so nice. A lot of them have left since I've, I've come and a lot of new girls have came. Mm -hmm. But we still do our monthly meetups and I find myself becoming so close to these German girls and we hang out all the time. We get lunch, we go on walks. Um, and it's so great because I've made friends that now are back in Germany and they're still texting me, keeping me updated and I'm keeping them updated. So it's really nice. You're so international now. I know, right? <laughs> My fullest respect, it takes a lot to go out by yourself the first time. And when you go out by yourself the first time, you might recognize that it actually feels good to do something by yourself, right? It does. I went to a concert by myself and I was so scared to go. And I realized that all of the people at the concert, we like the same music. So it was easy to talk to people <laughs> and we had something in common. And then after I felt so good because I felt like I really pushed myself out of my comfort zone. Yes, it's like a little adventure just for yourself. You're not sharing it with anyone else, but somehow you share it with everyone on the place you are with. Yeah, it's so true. Um, yeah. That's so nice. Um, I can remember remember me going out by myself first time um, without knowing anyone. And I checked, like, I checked myself so many times in the mirror. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Okay, you can do it. You can do it. I know. Let's breathe. Let's breathe. I can do it. And I went out. And I, like, actually met so many cool people. And I met this um band it's like a rock and roll band in LA at a place and I became so such good friends with them that we went to Lake Tahoe a couple a couple months later wow 
how is it to meet someone the first time? It's a little scary, but um, the it's easy to talk to the other au pairs because I know that they're going through the same thing as me. Mm -hmm. Like at first, we were all a little scared. And now I've been in my placement for six months. So now when new girls come, I feel confident to kind of help them yes. ease into life in New Jersey. That's so nice. It's so welcoming. Yeah. And they're, all of the girls are so nice. And it, it, it is scary to talk to people for the first time. But once you find something you have in common or you, like, make memories with them, then it becomes easier and easier because then you can say, oh, remember when we did that? Yeah. And it's so fun. <laughs> Tell me about some of your memories. Oh, let's see. My first month here, me and a couple of the other au pairs, we went to a lantern festival in it was in New Jersey but you could see the whole New York skyline and it was so fun and we had a picnic in the park and there was food trucks and we all put paper lanterns into the water and it was one of my first memories here and it was so fun that's so beautiful I love that so good wow so what changed for you since you started working as a professional? What has, like, can you see that you changed also? I think so. I think I'm much more comfortable being by myself now because I have a lot of free time during the day. So I kind of picked up some new hobbies. I had to figure out what I like to do because back in Boston, if I had free time, I was doing schoolwork or I was working or I was seeing my friends. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came here, I had a lot of free time. So I started going to the gym and I started reading books and I started journaling and it's all been great. And I really feel like I've gotten to know myself better. Yeah, it's really great. I understand that it's because you're having time for yourself to spend with yourself. You're doing, you start doing stuff that's actually good for you mm -hmm. without an outside influence. So you connecting deep with your own personality. This yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's beautiful. I hope everyone can have this experience. Like I, actually want that everyone can have so much more time for themselves to reconnect to what they like and what they do and you know relax and have fun yeah yeah it's yeah. great so what is your plan let's talk about the program for a little bit and how long does it take you like how long do you stay with the family so I actually, so I've been here six months um, and I'm in a one year contract. So I would be done in September, mm -hmm. but I've extended with my family. Oh, so that, I will that, be here. Yeah. Congrats. That's amazing. Thank so, you. Goes usually two years, huh? Yeah. So luckily I, as a U.S. care professional, I can do it longer if I wanted. Uh -huh. So hopefully my long-term plan is to do the Australia program. <gasps> yeah. But you want to go to Australia for another year. Yes. Oh. I know, which is kind of crazy, but it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yes, it's a big dream. I did the same. I'm still, I'm still in the U.S. I never, like... I'm fucking married now. <laughs> like, <laughs> back, so, um, that soon. So, yes. Um, moving to another continent is another level. Wow. I love that for you. 
I mean, totally, yes, why not? Some, <laughs> yeah. some people, um, I know they went to Australia with Apex Social and they literally fell in love with the country. And they taught me in a German podcast that life there is so swaggy and chill. And yeah. I, yes, that's such a, a different culture. I love that. I know. I'm so excited. I really hope that it's going to work out. Do you have travel travel plans for the US? Yeah, so I have a trip planned right now to go to um, Washington, D.C. in April to see the cherry blossoms. Mm. So I'm very excited about that. And I've traveled a few times with my host family to Florida and we are actually going this Saturday again down there. Um what area of Florida? Um Anna Maria Island. Is it in the south is it in the south? Yeah it's I think it's right under Tampa. Ah okay. Oh this side is beautiful too. Yeah. Cool. Do you have Instagram? Yes I do. Do you want to share it? So yeah, you, you, it's you Meg, M E G dot Rizzo, R I Z Z O. Nice. I'm following you right now. Yay! Yes. Cool. I want to see you in Australia. Huh. I know. I'm gonna be posting all the time when I'm there. No, I'm, like this is. I would be so happy for you. It's a big decision. And it takes a lot of bravery. Like, you have to be brave to do something like that. I and know. Respect for everyone doing it. And yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it is but, scary. Yeah. But I think it's okay. worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy you have a good time. And I'm also very glad about like our honest conversation about friendships and meeting people and all this stuff. Can I ask you another question? Yes. Are you, are you seeing anyone right now? Are, are you dating or are you like saying, okay, because I'm living with a family, right? In mm -hmm. the house, I'm stopping this for a while because I'm just focusing on me. Yeah. So, um, I think dating is really hard because if you want to date with, while living with uh, your host family, it kind of has to be serious. Because you don't want to just be bringing random people to meet your host family. So I think at the moment, I'm not really looking for anything. So, but if it came to me, that would be great. But it would have to be someone special that I would actually want yeah. to introduce to my host family. Gonna filter on high level <laughs> yeah exactly a high level relationship yeah so we'll see yeah I don't want to be like this is some guy <laughs> yes i think the same if you're dating it should be seriously um, yeah yeah because you don't really have a privacy at your own space right so don't did you meet your husband here i met my husband in Belgium in 2018 at the moment. Oh. Wow. Last set. And I fell in love with him from second one. I saw him. I, oh. saw, I spied over. He was in the crowd um, dancing. And I was like, oh, handsome. Mm -hmm. I was like staying right in his ankle so he could see me from the side a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he did. And he came over and was like, nice shoes I was like <laughs> and uh, yes 20 minutes later I was sitting on his shoulders <laughs> oh wow something else and we danced for two hours we kissed at the end for the longest time you can kiss no everyone left because the festival was over it was the last night and I had to go back and he had to go back and wow in my travel month because this is something um do you have a travel month i don't have a travel month see right this is 
if you have a J1 visa, then you have a travel month and mm -hmm. a work permit for, so for everyone from Europe. Um, I met him again, and we started dating after three days. <gasps> I love that. And, yes, and I was traveling. I was backpacking San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, all this New Orleans. And I came back after for a week and we decided, yes, like we decided right away we want to do it. And then we had a long distance relationship. I and love that. Yes, we made it. We made it. Yay. <laughs> yeah. I never taught so many private things, but I love it. And I hope that you as a listener get a little entertained by our stories. My advice would be to just do it and don't overthink it. Like whatever decision you're going to make is going to be the right decision for you and you shouldn't overthink it because I think you should just go for it. Yes. Yeah, listen to your intuition and go for it. Obviously, you're so brave. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank Do you. This was great. And your your English speaking is amazing. So don't be worried about that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Enjoy your day. Maybe you know someone who could fit in the program and who is qualified to work on a, a high professional level for in-house care and support and it's just a beautiful beautiful position that you can be in and experience for your own personality and growth so yeah thanks so much i loved i loved having you thank <laughs> you for having me